What's up guys, this is Patrick Hall with fstoppers.com and today I thought it would be fun to take a break from all the photography and do something a little bit different. A lot of people have asked us how we have made our Apple boxes look so cool. This is a standard Apple box like you might buy from B&H and as you can see, it's pretty plain and boring. But today, I wanna show you how you can take something like this and trick it out into something that's gonna look a lot more interesting in your photographs. This video is sponsored by Luminar AI. This version of Luminar has been completely rebuilt from the ground up and is Skylum's most powerful piece of software yet. With Luminar AI's new templates feature, the software automatically scans each image and suggests a series of AI processes that are unique to each individual image. Each photograph will be processed differently depending on if it's a landscape, portrait, wedding, food, or product shot. With templates, you can save tons of time by editing your photos by streamlining common adjustments that you make over and over again. Of course, Luminar AI has all the classic filters like sun rays, sky replacement, and structure AI, as well as new intelligent filters like body and face AI, skin AI, and bokeh AI. To get your own copy of this incredible software, click the link in the description below. So if you're not sure what an Apple box is, basically it's just a little box made out of wood that's reinforced in the middle so that you can stand on it, you can turn it around. A lot of people like, like to sit on these things. They come in different sizes. This one's made by Kupo. We have a small one here made by Matthews. For some of these, I have added little uh, pieces of tape so that maybe if I wanna focus the camera and know that you know this is basically where I'm gonna be, I can use it like that. We also put these in the back of our sets. I think I have one right up here. I also have one on our couch. They're incredibly handy little things to have, especially if you enjoy making sets. Another thing that's really cool to do with these is you can you know, use them as props and put fabric and stuff over them. You can have somebody sit on top of that. So if you wanna make a scene for say, a bridal portrait indoors, or if you just want something that looks really nice for a normal headshot or portrait, Apple boxes, I think, are super convenient. The problem with these things is that when you buy them, I mean, look how boring this is. This doesn't look cool at all. I also kind of hate how a lot of these companies burn in their logo. Like, I don't really want to see that. But today, I'm going to show you how I have taken something like this and converted it into this much more interesting looking box. I've added a lot of distressing. I've put this cool little pinstripe on it. And I've also, on this side, you can kind of see the pinstripe doesn't always go all the way through. So if you don't have any Apple boxes in your studio and you want to purchase some of these and kind of do the same technique, I've put a link in the description below. You can check out the different brands that we have bought and some of the ones that we have here in our studio. So the goal today is to have a little bit of fun and get some stress out. We're going to beat the crap out of these boxes. And uh, hopefully I can get the rest of these done so that I don't feel ashamed putting these in our videos. So the very first thing that you need to decide is do you want to make all of your Apple boxes look the same? Or do you want them to have different tonalities? Do you want them to kind of have this rustic look that I'm going for? Or do you want them to perhaps, uh, you could paint them white, you could you know, put different colors. I was thinking of doing one kind of like a, like an Eddie Van Halen thing where you have a couple different stripes that are going over the boxes. This one was kind of inspired by like a, the race car look with like a really clean pinstripe. I think that looks really cool. So in today's video, I'm going to be kind of recreating this rustic look that I've already done on a few of our boxes. Now, in order to do that, you're going to want to pick out some different stains. And these are just some of the few stains that I have here down in Puerto Rico that I've been using. This one is a uh, Lanco. It's kind of a pecan color. What do we have here? We have a natural color. And then this one is a darker walnut. A lot of times I like to put these on a rag and mix them so that they have a lot of variety. I don't think just staining these perfect, uh, you know, natural color is going to look great, but Definitely experiment with that. The nice thing is I don't think you can really go wrong with this. We're not trying to create a perfect look. And in fact, the more you mess up, sometimes the better it will look. So for this box here, what I did was I basically stained this, I think this natural color, and I just stained the whole box so that it had some kind of color to it. I might have even added a little bit of the pecan to it just to give it a little bit of tonality because maybe the natural is just a little too yellow. And then from there, I took um, this gaffer's tape that I'm sure a lot of you guys have in your studio, and I just marked a perfect line down the middle of the box, made sure to get all of the edges. And then on this side, 
I think at one point I had this go all the way through, but then I started to think it might be kind of cool if this side, you know, it was just different. You're only gonna see one side of it at a time. So I thought, why don't I do a little variety here? So I, you can see here, I just ended the tape. And then I added a much darker stain once I had everything masked off. I believe for this box, I think I used this walnut look, which made this a lot darker than the middle. And then of course, the more stain you put on and then the thickness that you put it on, you're also going to kind of control the density of the color. Now I'm down in Puerto Rico, so I have the advantage of the sun being out every single day. It's definitely going to help to do this in a hotter climate, or you might want some kind of dehumidifier or something, because sometimes when you stain stuff, if you don't wipe the stain off or the stain doesn't absorb into the wood very well, sometimes you get this residue that's very sticky and it can take, I mean, I've seen it take a week or so to actually dry to where it's not sticky to the touch. So just be aware of that if you've never worked with stain. I like to put the stain on and then kind of wipe it off. It may take many more coats to do that, but I'm left with a product that doesn't have kind of that sticky residue. As I look at this closely, I can actually kind of see some areas where there's been more or less stain on this. So I definitely didn't do it perfect, but again, the beauty of doing a rustic look like this is that it doesn't have to look perfect. Um, some other ideas that I have for today, I might put some different size pinstripes. Maybe I'll do something like this with a smaller outer or inner pinstripe. I think that could look really cool. Of course, you don't have to add a pinstripe at all. You could just make it a solid color and that would look really nice. If you go on the internet, you can probably look up a lot of photographers like Ann Leibovitz or just type in Apple Box Photography and you're gonna see a whole bunch of different options that other photographers have done. Now, one thing that I found really useful in giving it this distressed look is I have a couple tools here. And this tool, I believe it's called a five in one. Well, this one says 14 in one, but you know, you might have this if you uh, do a lot of caulking or scraping or painting. It's just a really handy tool that a lot of people have in their toolbox. Um, with this, I could just really scrape this. And if you see here, I can actually remove a lot of the stain. And so depending on how you approach this, you may want to take a brand new Apple box, something like this, and start distressing it before you even stain it. And sometimes at the beginning, as you can see here, this looks pretty predictable and it doesn't really look authentic, but the more you do it, it's kind of like wearing in, I don't know if you've ever had a leather couch, but the more you wear the leather couch in, maybe over the course of years, all of these little predictable lines will start to actually blend together and look more authentic. So I think the key is to just go crazy and try to make as many little scrapes as you can. And then you can add your stain on top of this. And then depending on how deep you make these cuts, the stain is also going to change, you know, the density based on, you know, how much of the wood's been removed. So for these boxes, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna scrape these up first probably drag them through, you know, the concrete, the asphalt, as many different textures as I can get. And then also, you know, maybe I even take a hammer and you can kind of just chip away at the wood. I mean, you don't want to completely destroy these to where, you know, they have splinters and it's kind of a pain in the butt to sit on them, literally. But I think the more, again, variety that you can do, the better. Sometimes it helps to even get rocks. Ooh, that sounds good, doesn't it? And I have to say, this is the best stress reliever ever. If you're pissed off for any reason, take one of these things out and just throw them around. It's actually kind of fun. I don't think that did a whole lot. Can't really throw it on grass. If you don't have a sander, don't worry. If you want your corners rounded, just put it on the edge there, just scrape it across the bottom. One kind of issue that I haven't found an easy way to solve, and that is if you don't stain the inside of the box, sometimes it looks a little weird that this is super relict, but then inside I haven't done anything with it. So I might need to grab another rag, put some stain on it and just kind of wipe the inside. But depending on how you light it and where the camera angle is at, like see that way down there, I will never be able to stain that perfectly. So it'd be kind of nice if these companies sold these pre-stained or, you know, maybe not in that perfect light wood color, but gotta do what you can. I don't know if you can really see this, but what the rocks do is they add these divots 
So you get kind of like a, a scrape but then you can also get these little pinholes in there, which are really nice. So as I've talked through this, you've seen some of the approach that I've taken on this one box, but I'm gonna now take a break. I'm gonna grab all of these boxes that are not finished. We're gonna go outside. I'm just gonna beat the crap out of these and spend you know, a good hour or two really relicking these. And then we'll throw some stain on it, let it dry. And then the next time you see me, hopefully I'll have a couple of these done and uh, they'll look very different, but still in the same sort of vein. Sometimes it helps to just take a corner and really work that one area a little heavier than the rest so that it kind of has an uneven distressed feel. And then depending on how many little splinters and stuff you have, you may want to take some sandpaper and just kind of brush that off to clean it up a little bit more. One thing's for certain, beating these things up actually takes a lot of time, a lot of energy, I'm sweating out here. I've been out here maybe an hour just scraping these things and it's <laughs> it's not as easy as you would think, but it is kind of fun. Oh boy, that left a dent. Now throwing it off the side of your house into the yard is the only way to get those really authentic grass stains. All right, so we got this all pretty banged up now and the next step is to go ahead and add some stain because the best way to do this is to do it in multiple steps so that you stain and you relic and then you stain and then you relic and uh, you're creating kind of a three-dimensional look. All right, now ideally you would probably use like a, a t-shirt or like an actual rag to do this. There's all kinds of different methods to apply stain. I just have paper towel today, so I'm just gonna dip that in there. And this is the pecan stain. And so see, because I already scraped this up, as I add the stain, it's adding texture already. Whereas if I just stain this first, I could chip away this. It's just, I don't know, several different ways to skin a cat, but I think that looks pretty good. If you really want to get in there, you can just add a lot more stain. But as I mentioned earlier, if you don't wipe this off, it's going to leave a residue and then everything's kind of sticky. And also when you get this on your hands, it's kind of a mess. You're probably gonna have stained hands for a while. And because I'm doing this several times, I'm not too worried about it being perfect because I'm gonna scrape a lot more off and then I'm gonna let it dry and then I'm gonna put more stain on and then scrape it off. So I'm just trying to get kind of a base coat here. And just for fun, I might open this walnut as well. Give this a little shake. See the rust go off of it. I haven't used this in like a year. And let me just see what happens if I add a little bit of this to it. Oh my gosh, this is like glue. That looks horrible. What did I do to that stain? Oh well, let's see if this is salvageable. It's like a paste. It's like the it's like the stains dried out or something. Well, this side's definitely gonna look different. All right, so it's starting to get dark. I'm losing my light, but for this last box, I went with some crazy pinstripes. I used some really thin gaffer's tape here and I laid that down and I used some thicker gaffer's tape. So this side's gonna look a little crazy because I'm gonna stain this and then probably peel off some of the pieces and then restain it. And uh, hopefully when all the pinstripes are pulled off, it'll have like a different look to it. And this side, I went very simple. Again, the nice thing with these boxes is that you can only usually see one or two sides at a time. So you can do different designs and then just flip the box around depending on what you need. So this is gonna be kind of a more classic pinstripe that's a little bit different than the other one that I did, but um, I thought this would be a cool option too. And then I could just leave it like this. And when this dries, pull the tape off and I'd be left with uh, a dark color within a really white pinstripe or I can keep staining it and building it up and then pull the pinstripes off and then add a little bit of this so that it kind of gives it some depth. We'll see how this looks tomorrow. If you are worried about the bleed through under the tape, what you can do is just add just a little bit of stain and just build it up really slowly so that the stain doesn't go into the wood. If we're using thicker paint, I don't think it'd be as big of a deal, but we will only know when we pull the tape off. All right, it is 24 hours later. The sun has already set, and these have been out in the sun all day drying. 
I'm going to go ahead and pull off some of this to see how this looks. Hopefully the bleed through is not too bad. A little bit there. So I think what I'm gonna do here is stain this just a little bit darker, but then when I pull these off, I'll stain it all again so that these different pinstripes have different densities as well. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna to try to use this natural stain. I forget what this looks like. And let's see if... Just kind of makes the wood a little darker. I think I planned it to be a little more subtle than this. So maybe when I'm all done, I'm gonna relic it even more and then maybe put one more stain, a darker stain over it to kind of tone this down because I think this is gonna look a little too extreme. All right, here we are. This is like day three now. Let's go ahead and take off all of these stripes. So as you can see, the pinstripe right here is not perfect, but I think when I add the other stain, it's going to uh, kind of blend in and look pretty good. If you really want to go crazy with this, you can stain it, then drag it across some concrete, and put even more scratches in, and then stain it again and kind of make it a whole process. Now we'll just let that dry. All right guys, welcome back. It has been a few days now since I first started this project and I have some new boxes. As you can see, they have a lot of scratches. I really could probably spend a lot more time even making this more three-dimensional by just constantly wearing these down. Um, as you'll learn if you do this yourself, it can take a lot of time and it's a lot more energy and, uh, you know, physical strain than you probably would think. But, um, you know, you can kind of go crazy. Once you're done, though, you're probably never going to think about this again. So I would recommend, you know, really going full force and trying to make these look as good as possible. Here is one that's a little bit more plain. This one I didn't do quite as much of the distressing in different colors. Um, you know, this one, you can see the tape there that I pulled off. And then I have some of my other ones back here that I've done the pinstripes on, which look really cool. One thing, and just wrapping all of this up, one, one thing that I would consider sharing that I probably should have done is if you're going to mask anything to get kind of the pinstripes and the different, you know, designs on your boxes, I would recommend probably now looking back, going ahead and putting a single coat of the lightest stain possible because you're not going to use the raw wood color. It's just simply too bright and pristine. So I would probably put on just the lightest color of stain. Then I would put all of my tape down. And then I would probably put one more coat of the light stain. And what that's gonna do is it's going to kind of seal the edges of the tape so that when you peel the tape off, you don't have any of that bleed through. Again, with some of the examples that I have here, I don't know if you can really see this here. Maybe this is a better camera angle. There's just the littlest bit of bleed through, especially on the one in the back that had kind of the crazy Van Halen stripes. I think if I would have stained it, put the tape on, and then stained it one more time, I think most of the wood would have accepted that stain initially. And then as I put on the darker coats on top of the lighter coats, there'd be less uh, bleed through underneath when I peeled everything off. It's not the end of the world because I've relicked these so much that I don't think you'll ever really notice this when I do a photo shoot, but um, I think that's the biggest thing that I learned. Also, perhaps the best technique for distressing all of this is just to drag it on concrete. I had all these other tools to kind of give these gash marks and stuff, but in many cases, just dragging it all the way across your your uh, driveway or if you have a parking lot or something, anything with some really thick, you know, chunky asphalt, that is definitely the way to go. So there you go. This was a rather long video for what it was, but I wanted to document the entire steps that I took. 
Um, so if you wanna recreate this yourself, you can do it. And then if you have any better techniques or any other cool designs that you've done, I'd love to hear from you. Go to the F-Stoppers article in the description and leave your pictures there. If you're watching this on YouTube, you can leave it in the description below. I can just at least read about it. I'm really curious to see what you guys have done in your own photo studio, and maybe I can adopt some of those techniques to the next set of Apple boxes that I do. If you guys enjoy this type of photography content, make sure you head over to fstoppers.com. We have free content every single day there. Also subscribe to our YouTube channel because Lee and I create a ton of videos on this channel about photography. And if you're wanting to get more in depth and a little more serious about photography and want to learn from some of the best photographers in the world, people that are way more talented than Lee or I, head over to fstoppers.com slash store where we have a bunch of instructors who teach really detailed techniques on what makes their photography so special. This includes headshot photography, architectural and real estate photography, landscape photography, product photography, basically any genre you could possibly imagine. We have some education on there for that. And if you wanna buy or get any of the materials that I use to make these, I'm gonna put in the description all of the Apple boxes from the different brands that I have here, as well as some of the, uh, the stains and tools and different things that I use to mask all of this out. If you wanna get any of that, you can go to the description in the link below. Again, hope you guys enjoyed this. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you very soon.